overhedging is one of the most vexing problems in currency management. Can you systematically overcome it? Yes, you can. Welcome to CurrencyCast. My name is Austin McKinley. I'm the senior financial writer at Cantox and your host. Today, we use the real case of a medium-sized German exporter with sales in US dollars and emerging market currencies to illustrate how treasuries can effectively deal with the perennial problem of overhedging as they protect the firm's budget rate. This episode is sponsored by BNP Paribas, the bank for a changing world. Headquartered in Germany, the company sells standalone machinery equipment in Asia and other emerging markets. Prices are mostly set in US dollars, but also in other currencies for the duration of the entire campaign period. They are then reset at the onset of a new budget period, whatever happened to currency markets in between. The budget rate is set with a consensus of investment bank forecasts, to which is added a markup of between 2 and 4%, depending on the volatility of the currency involved. The Treasury team then hedges 80% of the budget at the start of the period for Q1 and Q2, and then repeats that operation in May for Q3 and Q4. With the information provided by the company, we are in a position to create an FX risk map to assess potential vulnerabilities. It seems clear that the company faces four major challenges. Number one, the risk of overhedging. Large hedges at the start of the period leave the company vulnerable to potential overhedging, even as a significant chunk of the exposure is left unprotected. Number two, the high cost of hedging. Hedging is expensive due to unfavorable forward points when selling in US dollars. Number three, poor visibility. Poorly collected exposure data at the company's subsidiaries undermines overall visibility. And number four, manual processes. Many tasks are manually executed in a time-consuming and resource-intensive way. To tackle the challenges faced by the German exporter with the help of an automated FX hedging program, the exposure information submitted by the company must fulfill several criteria in terms of timing, detail, connectivity, and control. In terms of timing, there are two important moments. The moment the budget is created, here, the budgeted exposure and the budget rate must be submitted. And the other important moment in time is when each sales order is confirmed. In terms of detail, those information about those sales orders must include the amount of the sale, the currency to be sold, in this case mostly US dollars, the currency to be bought, in this case euros, and a reference number for traceability purposes. In terms of connectivity, API-based connectivity ensures that the data will flow seamlessly from the company's ERP. And finally, in terms of control, proper automated validation rules must be set in order to ensure control of the exposure data. The automated FX hedging program best suited to tackle the challenges faced by the company is a combination of a static hedging program with conditional orders for the forecasted exposure, coupled with a program to hedge incoming firm sales orders. The benefits include securing the budget rate. As the large initial hedge is downsized, conditional FX orders are set on the remaining forecasted exposure in such a way that mathematically and without speculation, the average exactly matches the firm's budget rate in a worst case scenario in currency markets. We're also killing two birds with one stone. By downsizing the uh, large initial hedge, we're by definition reducing overhedging risk and the cost of hedging in the face of unfavorable forward points. And finally, the automatic adjustment of the exposure. By selling firm sales orders, the program automatically adjusts the remaining exposure to currency risk, which further reduces the risk of overhedging. With historical FX rates from 2017 to 2020, the combination of hedging programs would have outperformed the company's budget rate in three out of those four years. In 2019 alone, the outperformance would have reached 5.8% as measured by the distance between the average head rate and the company's budget rate. Here's a key point. As long as stop loss orders remain untouched and hedges are executed on the back of firm sales orders, the company locks in an average head rate that is by definition more favorable than its budget rate. 
higher the proportion of hedges that are executed on the back of firm sales orders, the higher the degree of overperformance, and the lower the residual forecasting risk. In 2017, about 66% of the hedges would have been executed on the back of firm sales orders. The remaining 34% would have been based on forecasts. In 2019, that proportion would have reached a full 100%. When things went wrong in currency markets, like in 2018, stop losses would have been triggered and the hedge rate would have equaled the company's budget rate. When things went right in currency markets, like in 2019, the firm would have generated an extra 460,000 euros on the back of a 20 million euro exposure. Outstanding results, indeed. Thanks to BNP Paribas for sponsoring this episode.